Hello, APLIT. Welcome to our presentation on spiral dynamics. My name is Julius, and we will be guiding you through this interesting psychological theory. So, spiral dynamics. Spiral dynamics was a theory uh, formulated for uh, over the last couple of decades um, of the 20th century by uh, psychologist Carol W. Graves with the intention of trying to formulate graphically a, um, a way to understand the progression of human values and human nature um, with experience and exposure. Uh, the spiral dynamics consists of a number of colors in a continuum on the, of the spiral um, and that people progress through starting from the bottom and going to the top. And we have different colors to represent different stages of that progression. And we'll start with the first one uh, at the bottom, uh, namely the beige dynamic. The beige dynamic represents very primal desires and sensory uh, perceptions that people, uh, sensory gratification that people seek. Um, be the beige mindset is what governs uh, animal instinct and we, what we consider as instant gratification. Uh, like I'm hungry or I'm tired or I need sleep. If you want to think about it in terms of a person, um, when a person is first born, and, um, an infant really doesn't care about anything else except just themselves and, oh, I, I, I need a blanket, I need my diaper changed, um, stuff like that. Very, very primal, uh, instinctual desires and, um, and sensory perception. Um, but after a while, uh, when that child grows <coughs> and becomes a toddler, they become aware of the world around them, as well as the fact that they're a member of a group. Um, they are just a person in, this, um, in a group that has a, some sort of authority, some sort of mysterious unknown that they can't really perceive. Um, but just uh, in the toddler's experience, what the blue, no, what the purple uh, really embodies is a knowledge of community and a knowledge of uh, an integration in the community, but also uh, just a wide unknown that um, one is not able to interact with yet. Um, this really represents like the toddler mindset that we just described. But after a while that toddler grows up and uh, becomes preteen and they get, they start to realize, they start to be able to um, pinpoint exactly what that authority is and they get to be able to manipulate that authority for their own gains. Um, to put it into context, um, if you have a preteen um, and they recognize that their parents are the authority that they have to, um, that they have to manipulate to get candy, for example, if a preteen wants a candy, um, then they'll find ways to compel that authority, their parents, to buy them that piece of candy. That's really how it works. Um, red is group, but also authority that they can manipulate. This is the first uh, point in which a person can actually manipulate their surroundings for their own gains. Um, after that, um, the blue stage, of, <coughs> uh, which follows, uh, the blue stage really embodies an uh, the addition of purpose to that sense of group and authority. For the first time, a person uh, who progressed from red to blue can identify uh, exactly who that authority is and why they are that authority, um, why circumstances are the way they are, and in doing so, they can imbue uh, their circumstances with purpose and they can understand the purpose for doing certain things. If you think about, um, <coughs> if you think about a child who understands, oh, okay, I have parents and they have an authority because they have a job um, that they can make money and we need money to buy food that's stable. They can understand why the circumstances are the way they are and why their parents have that authority. But after a while, like with an understanding of authority um, and purpose comes, uh, comes a feeling of skepticism. Um, when that child, uh, after a while, after understanding the purpose, begins to question why that authority exists. Why do my parents have so much authority? Like, why can't I go out and do stuff? Like, this really embodies the spirit of the teenage years when people are rebellious and they question a lot of things, um, sometimes just for the sake of questioning them. And it's, a, it's an integral uh, point of development in anyone's life. Um, <coughs> but following the orange, after a while just rebelling against everything, uh, comes the green stage, which is a reaction to the failure or the dysfunctionality of the orange stage. Um, 
people in the green mindset uh, have an appreciation of, of the uh, inadequacy of orange in addressing the world, of the world around them. You can't always just be skeptical and question everything. There's a certain, it's a bit, there's a certain element of functionality that you're missing over there. And in which case, green, the way green thinks about it is like, okay, well, if I can't beat them, I might as well join them. And the green now has a sense of, um, of the system of society and their, uh, and their role in it and seeks to make consensus with others to get what they want. It's still self-centered, but they recognize the different sectors of the system and the necessary and the necessity of compromise to reach consensus and to reach um, and to reach uh, a goal. And now that completes the first tier of spiral dynamics, which is um, which is set forth just by um, which is characterized by uh, egocentrism. No matter all these perspectives up until this point, really just are concerned about what I want and how do I get what I want, even if it's whether it's uh, with a group or just with myself or with an authority or with with a system as a whole, it's still what I want. Um, the second uh, tier follows this uh, with yellow, which is a direct reaction to the inadequacies of green. Uh, yellow, for the first time, is able to see the other levels and identify them, and sees the inadequacies of green in that um, yellow can identify that being trying to impose one's ideals on a group and trying to achieve that uh, isn't, always, um, isn't always easy. And consensus um, can't always be reached just from a singular perspective. And so what Yellow does for the first time is able to um, remove themselves temporarily from that idea of identity. Um, and in trying to reach consensus, they're able to, <coughs> Yellow is able to um, try to manipulate those different mindsets to reach a compromise. Yellow realizes that people in green don't always understand that not everyone can be green to reach consensus. People have to adopt different mindsets to reach that balance for functionality. Um, and following yellow uh, becomes the, uh, the turquoise level, which is the pinnacle of, uh, pinnacle of the development of values. What turquoise does that's very interesting is that turquoise is fully able to remove themselves from that idea of identity and even to transfer that idea of identity to other groups which don't even include the turquoise person himself or herself. Turquoise, um, in, tur in a turquoise person's mind, the idea of self and the idea of the system are completely one. And the, the turquoise person is fully able to freely adopt and recognize and have so much facility with all these different values and recognizes the value of each color of mindset, each dynamic, in different, in different circumstances. <coughs> so, how does this apply to um, how does this apply to beyond just human development? Um, spiral dynamics actually draws incredible parallels also with just society as a whole, not just personal development, but the development of civilization. If you think about like really primitive tribes and um, <coughs> or even just Neanderthals, um, just making making uh, making clothes and and working with primitive tools. And, and burning wood for fuel, um, they're really mainly concerned about what they need for the next day, or what how the hunt went, and how if they're going to have enough food to last through the winter. And this is a very beige level of thinking, in that it's what like it's what I need, or what or what we need. If you consider like the self as as the uh, as the tribe, um, it's what the needs and the sensory perceptions like hunger or or uh, or cold are, and that really is a beige beige way of thinking. And it's it's very functional. Like you don't that tribe would not want to think about like, oh uh, like the systemic good or whatever if they can't even meet their basic needs. However, we also see, for example, in like very religious religious sects, we see um, a more of a blue way of thinking. Um, and blue being the uh, kind of the community of uh, kind of being the community of purpose. And that there's a certain deity or a certain religious text or a certain set of ideals that uh, that embody the authority of that group, and that's a very close-knit group that uh, that obtains purpose from that authority. Um, and this really embodies the idea of the blue mindset. Um, for much of the uh, for much of the Enlightenment and uh, the Industrial Revolution and the uh, Scientific Revolution, um, we really had a, a, a society a developed society was in an orange state of mind where people were questioning the authority of royalty um, and reacting against the circumstances of feudal Europe. 
and trying to seek out evidence of the natural world and trying to find out more about their surroundings. This really embodies a skeptic. This really embodies the skepticism, the skepticism that is characteristic of the orange uh, mindset. And then we have today's society, where we are all rec most for the most part the developed world is recognizing the diff the importance of the different sectors of our society, but we're still having um, a difficulty uh, reaching compromise. And that's the um, and that perfectly exam uh, exemplifies uh, the green mindset, where we are still engaged in, in the pursuit for self-interest, but we recognize the importance of, the, of working together with the other sectors. Um, <coughs> so, like, why should we study spiral dynamics? Why is the, how is this applicable to our daily lives? Hmm. Well, so spiral dynamics is more than just like a way to categorize the way people think. It's also a way to understand the world and to understand perspectives and to make sense of all these different opinions floating around and to imbue each one with value. Um, if you, a great way to illustrate the, the, um, <coughs> the way spiral dynamics can help you in your thinking is just like in, our, in, in the US, the, uh, the, whole, the whole conflict, the whole political fragmentation um, between conservatism and liberalism. Um, if you think about it, like a big issue uh, that's, that recently uh, overtook the country was just the issue of uh, universal health care. It was uh, Obamacare was very controversial, and just to take it, um, some Europe U European countries have universal health care. Sometimes that may be a good idea. So, but there's so much like there's so much debate over whether something is good or bad, or or functional or dysfunctional. Um, but if you have a, if you take it through spiral dynamics and you look at it, and you look at universal health care as an issue of expanding or contracting the scope of identity, you'll see that really, if you think about it. We can, like, people, taxpayers can either pay into a system uh, and collectivize, collectivize their, um, their risk and, and their costs. Um, in the case of universal health care, it's a very, like, system-oriented system idea where everyone pays a certain amount. Not everyone will get that money back in the form of benefits, but people, people who really need it will be able to reap those benefits. That's a very system-oriented idea that may be characteristic of the yellow or the green or even the turquoise uh, mindset. However, in circumstances, for example, in political unrest, where we don't have that much of a connection and the system isn't that functional, people and we would definitely be, um, we would be more inclined to reap immediate gain or uh, consistent, um, immediate gain even at the cost of like a net amount of gain. Um, that's more of a beige or a red idea and that sometimes we want to have full control over our assets and what we do and what we pay for. Sometimes it's not a good idea to think sy um, systemically, like in Turkey. Sometimes it's better to think, to think about yourself. And so really, when you think about this, it's just uh, all the different colors can really help you to see the world in color. Usually we think about issues not even as black or white, but as a whole continuum of, of gray and 50 shades of all these of all these different shades of like black and everything, white and everything in between. But with spiral dynamics, if you start thinking about it this way, you see the world in color. It's no longer just black or white or good or bad or functional or dysfunctional. It's you, if you think and you're able to identify different mindsets and different actions and behaviors um, with these colors, with whether it's a blue way of thinking or a red way of thinking or a green way of thinking or whatever color be it, you'll start to see the value of all these different perspectives in their own, in, in their, with their own value. And that everything, all these perspectives and all these opinions have their own value in a certain, in certain contexts. Certain contexts are more applicable, um, are more, you see them more, but every understanding of spiral dynamics allows you to respect the opinions of others a lot more. And so, <coughs> and that is the utility, it's an amazing uh, tool to understanding, um, to getting to know other people and to appreciating other people's perspectives in our diverse and beautiful world.